So this is Neck Dive, a phenomenon loathed by many guitar players, commonly associated with SGs, some Deans I've heard, BC Rich, I'm sure there are many others. And it's something that happens when like the balance in the guitar is kind of off center due to the strap button placement up here. This only really applies when you're standing up as well. But this guitar is definitely a culprit. But we're gonna test it with a little experiment here before we actually go ahead and move the strap button. But first, let me show you something. Okay, so you can see here, the strap button is located on the back of the guitar there, in the back of this horn. And with this on here, when I'm holding it, you know, in the regular playing position, the strap comes off at like this angle like this, and it just kind of seems like unsafe, unsafe in a way where I feel like this could come off so easily. Sure, you could put strap locks on there, but still, I mean, you still have the neck dive problem. So it's just putting a Band-Aid on the fact that this could come off. Even if you were to turn this around, there's another way you could put it on. It just makes no difference. Like it's like pulled at this angle and I feel that that could just come off so easily. So I hate having the strap button back here for both of those reasons. If you're not using strap locks or clip lock strap or something like that. But neck dive is what we're talking about here. And so we're gonna wanna move this strap button up to here, I think. But let's do a little test first. Back with the blue tape you saw a moment ago. So I think the simple fix is to just move the strap button from the back right to the top of the horn here where it's located with like most Strat style guitars. And I think that that's gonna fix the balance issue there. So to prove it, before I actually go and move the strap button, which I'm pretty confident it's gonna work, but I'd like to show you just a little simple test here. I'm just gonna take this off of here and I'm gonna tape it to here real quick, just temporarily, so we can see if the neck still dives or not. This isn't the safest thing, especially this tape is cheap like painter's masking type tape. I'm not using strong gaff or, or you know stronger tape because I don't want any adhesive to stick to the guitar. So I'm just trying this, hoping it would work just for the sake of the experiment. Okay, got it on there in the position it will be in eventually once I move that strap button. And let's see, ah, voila, look at that. It does not dive, it worked. That's how it's gonna be and it's gonna stay up just like we want it to. So right now, I'd like to take you step-by-step step through the process of how I'm going to move this strap button to the top of the horn here, which is kind of difficult because there's not a lot of meat there. It kind of comes not really to a point. I noticed with some other guitars, like Solar comes to mind where the horns almost come to a complete point. And I always wonder how could you put a uh, strap button there? Maybe you can't, maybe you gotta get a little intuitive with it. I don't know, but there's enough meat here where we're gonna make it happen. So let's get into that right now. Okay, so the first step is going to be to remove the strap button from its original location. And what I would do here, so I've got some wood putty, I'm gonna simply just ball up and stick in there. Black would be ideal, but all I have is this natural. But anyways, you just put that in there, little black paint, it'd be cool. So I kind of feel like I don't wanna do this right now in case it's still wet when I go to put the guitar back on to test it later, you know, I don't want this like rubbing up against my shirt with this wet putty. So this is maybe something I do, you know, before bed, let it dry overnight and then uh, touched up a little black good as new or you could just leave it like that in case you ever want to put it back I mean you could always redrill it as well but in this case we're just gonna leave it right now and I will fill that in after a little bit next is going to be to determine exactly where we're gonna put this thing so what I'm gonna do is I'm taking a nail and I'm make a little mark dead center and I want to kind of see like where's most of the meat it looks like you know We'd want to go in at, we could go in at a straight angle like that, but then we run the risk of it popping out this side. So I'm going to go at a little bit of an angle in that way to get the most meat. By meat, I mean, you know, thickest part of the wood as possible. So I'm going to kind of go at a bit of an angle like that, and I'm going to go dead center, and we're going to make a little mark so we can drill a pilot hole. This is kind of difficult 
well, trying to maintain a camera angle <laughs> shot, but I'm digging in there. Just something that I can feel, something that uh, will get the, that I can get the pilot hole going with, or else you'd be slipping all around and stuff with the drill bit. So I've got that good, kind of dead center. I don't know if you can see that there. But I made myself a little hole with a nail. That's probably gonna be pretty, pretty good. Maybe like a push pin would be better. Another thing I'm gonna do, so I'm gonna go back to blue tape here. And an old trick, I don't know whether this is for real or not, but when I was a kid, my dad, when he'd hang a picture on the wall, before he pounded the nail into the wall to hang the picture, he'd put a piece of masking tape on the wall and then he'd pound the nail in. And the theory was, is that the masking tape would kind of like maybe aid in preventing the drywall from cracking or splitting at all. That's just like a wives tale or a dad's tale. I don't know, but in this case, I'm gonna do that. And I'm gonna place the tape just kind of tightly over this before we do our drilling. Just as a superstition to hope that maybe if the, if the finish was going to crack or splinter in any way, maybe it won't because of this that we can simply pull off after we drill. Then I'm gonna take this and feel around and find my pilot hole. There it is. So we know exactly where to drill. Okay, we're looking good there. As you can see, got my hole. I'm gonna use a super small bit at first. And after we get that drilled, then I will increase the size closer to the size of the screw because you can always go bigger when you're drilling if you need to, but you can't go back smaller. So anyways, I'm gonna get the pilot hole started with this little guy. Here we go. Again, this is kind of going to be tough to do and keep on camera. Hmm, let's see. We'll come around this way. Get a good angle. I'm going to try to get the best angle in here that I can. Remember that I want to drill into as most meat as possible. So that's going to kind of be at a bad angle. Just go for it. How far in do we go? About like that. Not far out. Screw. I'm gonna go a tiny bit further. I'd like to say that went really well. Good. We got that. Now I'm going to move to a little bit bigger of a bit. And when I compare that. This it's smaller than the screw, which will be nice. because It'll be tight, give us some bite. You can always go bigger, like I said. So let's get this in here. And here we go. Great success. Now we'll pull off our masking tape, hoping for the best. Perfect. Look at that hole. See that there? Turned out perfectly. Let's get the screw in. Screw, strap button, little felt there. I'm gonna go. Okay. 
Okay. All right. It's nice and tight, ready to go. It looks perfect. Perfect job if I do say so myself. And let's put the strap on and see what happens. I got a good feeling about it. Okie dokie, here we go. Nice. Nice. Moment of truth. Guitar in playing position. Haha, it worked just as expected. Perfect, feels just right. Exactly like I said, or thought it would. And that was the right move to make. So you can see how easy it is to do. And any of your Vipers, SGs, any guitars that have that neck dive, eliminate it easily just like that by moving your strap button. I know it seems easy, but not everybody knows how to do this stuff, so I wanted to show you. But now, we're gonna take it one step further, and I'm gonna put some DeMarzio clip lock straps on. You'll see how it works perfectly, just like this too. So, uh, if you wanna stick with me for that, let's head over. It'll be a super quick install, and we'll be all done. Okay, so here we are back at the workbench and I've got a brand new DiMarzio clip lock strap here. This is the John Pachucci signature one. Super cool, super easy to install, ultra durable, and definitely my straps of choice. We're gonna do a super quick install here. I've done this a number of times, but if you'd like a more in-depth explanation, I have uh, at least a couple very detailed DiMarzio clip lock strap installation videos and more about why I like them so much, but let's get going. Easy clip on and off. We're just going to attach those and then we'll put the strap on because that just clips in to that. First step, remove the old strap buttons. I am going to use these little felts in my new installation just because I'd like to. One down, one to go. Boom. And just like that, the Marzio clip lock strap is ready for action. Yes, sir. All right, and there we have it, guys. Check it out. DiMarzio clip lock strap installed. Piece of cake. Ready to go. No neck dive whatsoever. Stays exactly where I want it, which is the name of the game there. Feels just right. Absolutely perfect. Appreciate everybody watching. If you made it this far, I hope the video was useful for you. If it was, give it a thumbs up for me. Please consider subscribing to the channel and check out some more of my maintenance tutorials, doing all everything, string changing, Floyd Roses, intonation, truss rods, Evertune, action. I got it all covered so that uh, I could be your maintenance hub if need be, plus a load of other stuff here on the channel. Thanks so much for watching. I'm Rob Arnold. I hope to see you again on the next one.